Hey, what's up you guys? It is Forge here and welcome back to part 5 of our Thermal Expansion mod review. Today, we are going to be looking at item ducts and fluid ducts and also a few other things related to that. So as always, if you guys do enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first thing we have is the basic fluid duct and this can be made in one of two ways. You can make the opaque or the regular version. And this is made with two copper ingots and one glass and that will give you six fluid ducts. I forgot to put the numbers in, sorry about that. Um, or you can make the opaque ones and that's one lead and two copper ingots and that will also give you six fluid ducts opaque. And the difference between these is you can actually see the fluid in this one and you can't in this one, I'll show you now. So if I go ahead and just right click all of these, you'll see it's doing the exact same thing. It's filling them up at the exact same rate, but you can see the fluids in this one and you cannot in this one. But yeah, that's about all they really do. They just move fluids around. Although if the fluid is too hot or too cold, the bi uh, pipe will break. So I'll show you that now. So for example, if I move lava around in here for an extended period of time, these pipes will eventually break. Like that. Okay guys, and then we have the hardened fluid ducts. And these can just basically transfer uh, fluids of a higher temperature, so like the lava and the gel of cryotheum without actually exploding. These are made with two hard one hardened glass, two invar, and that'll give you six of these. All of these are six recipes. And then you can make the hardened fluid duct opaque with a lead ingot and two invar ingots. And yeah, so these can move basically hotter and colder fluids uh, than these guys. That's about all that's different with these. Okay guys, the next thing we have is the signalum plated fluid ducts. And the difference between these is they are able to transfer RF as well as fluids within them. So these are made with obviously the hardened fluid ducts and then you can do one hardened fluid duct, uh, three signalum nuggets and three electrum nuggets and you will upgrade one. You can do this basically with three hardened fluid ducts, an electrum ingot and a signalum ingot and that'll give you one, uh, well three of the signalum plated fluid ducts. And then you can do the same with the opaque ones. And yeah, basically all these allow you to do is transfer energy and uh, liquids through the same pipe. Okay guys, the next thing we have is the super laminar fluid duct. And these can be both made of the opaque and non-opaque variety. The difference is in the crafting and that is basically just using a hardened fluid duct and putting either the opaque or the fl regular one in. And this is just made with four hardened glass around and then four bronze ingots. And these basically have a limitless transfer rate when pressurized. That just means they have limitless transfer rate as long as they're all connected to a system. And with all of these, you are able to actually change them between the opaque and the regular version. And that is just by um, adding, and this is just a one crafting recipe, by the way. But with these ones, uh, yeah, you can transfer between the two without crafting them. So if you put six fluid duct, uh, just regular ones, and lead ingot, you will get the opaque ones. And inversely, you can do the same thing with the regular glass and that'll make it opaque. Uh, the difference is between these ones here, uh, the regular ones and the more advanced ones is you need hardened glass to change between the opaque version and to the uh, non-opaque version. Moving on, we have the item ducts and again, uh, these are come in the opaque and the regular version. The difference is obviously you can see the items again, but also they can reduce lag. Same with the fluid duct if you have the opaque versions because there's not a bunch of fluids and items moving through the pipes all the time, but it depends what you prefer. Uh, with the item duct though, uh, the non-opaque version is made with two tin ingots and a piece of hardened glass, a bit more expensive. And then the opaque version is made with two tin ingots and a lead ingot. And these basically just move items. But, you know, they can't just move all items out of everything. Most of these machines have, like, outputs and inputs. So if we set that to be the output there and this to be the input here, then you'll see that we can just uh, connect these two up with the item ducts and they will actually move anything that comes through, like iron ore, uh, for example. So if I chucked that in there and smelted that through, then it would eventually transport through because there is an input, an output, and then input on the other end, like so. And yeah, but if you want to do things for like strong boxes and stuff, you'll notice if I place the iron ingot in here and just place this in the middle, or this one, either one, it won't actually move this because there's no actual output in this chest. And we're going to fix that now. So to achieve this, we're going to need something called a servo. And this basically extracts fluids and items from something. So yeah, these can be used on fluid ducts as well. And I'll show you in a minute how these work as well. 
And these are just made with two iron nuggets, one glass, one redstone, and two iron ingots. And this will give you a regular servo. And this has an extract rate of three seconds, max stack size of eight. You can read all the information there if you press shift on it. Uh, and then you can upgrade to the hardened servo. And this is made with an iron ingot, two iron nuggets, I mean, <laughs> one glass, two invar ingots and one redstone and again you can see this has a slightly faster extraction rate and a uh, bigger stack size also they have bigger blacklists as well as you make them bigger or whitelists depends how you look at them you can also just straight away upgrade from the regular servo to the hardened servo just by putting a regular servo and an invar ingot together then we have the reinforced servo and again you can see it has a faster roof extraction time and a bigger max stack size etc etc has more filter options um, but this is made with two iron nuggets, a piece of glass, two electrum ingots, and a redstone, and that'll give you two. Or we can come over to here, and you can combine either the servo and, and an electrum ingot, the regular one, or you can combine the hardened servo and the electrum ingot to get one. So to show this, yeah... Uh, it's more like this than both of them. I was just doing this to make my life a bit easier, although it hasn't really. <laughs> uh, so then we have the Signalum Servo, and this is made with, again, there's a pattern emerging here, one glass, two iron nuggets, a redstone, and two Signalum ingots, and this will give you the Signalum Servo, and you can do the same again with the regular Servo, Hardened Servo, or Reinforced Servo, combine it with the Signalum ingot. And then, obviously, we have the Resonant Servo again, and this is made with one glass, two iron nuggets, two enderium ingots, and one redstone, and that'll give you two of the redstone servos, and as you can see, it has a faster extraction rate, as does this one. They're actually the same extraction rate between the top two, uh, there's just a speed boost in that one that's time times three as opposed to times two, so yeah. And then obviously you can upgrade them again. So if we grab this Resonant Servo now and go like this, we actually have a few options in here. We have the blacklist, so if I go ahead and grab some iron right now, and we threw that in there and left it on blacklist. You can r left click or right click to toggle between blacklist and whitelist mode. We'll leave it on blacklist mode. Uh, you also have use metadata, so if there's your pickaxe has a damage on it, it will detect whether that pickaxe has the exact same metadata on it. If you don't want that, then you can turn off the metadata and put ignore metadata on. Same with MBT, MBT data is basically just the item's uh, binary tag, so you can't actually see it in this version, but in newer Minecraft versions you can see like the numbers on the end, and different, if you had like two different tins in your pack, it would be able to tell the difference between the two tins, as well as the or dictionary, and also there's the mod owner as well, so you can sort between that in that way as well. Also, it has like a nearest first, furthest first, random, round robin type thing. So if it's on nearest first, it'll go to the nearest inventory. Uh, if we have it, uh, another one here, uh, these can also connect, by the way. <laughs> I just forgot to mention that. Uh, yeah, this will go to the nearest, so this one here. If we had it on furthest, it would come down to here first. If we had it on random, it would go basically choose between the two. And round robin means one will go in there, then the next one will go in there. And then one will go in there. So that's kind of handy. You can also decrease the stack size, shift and you, shift and right click, uh, left click, and you can decrease by 16. Right click and you can increase by or decrease by four. Shift and right click, that is. Normal and you can do by one. Normal right click and you can do by one as well. But yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and leave that on 64. But yeah, you'll notice it has this redstone control circuit and you'll notice the iron hasn't actually moved. And even if we set it onto the whitelist, it won't actually move because we haven't actually got this thing on. Now that it's on high, if I placed a redstone torch here, this thing would actually uh, go on through. If I set it on low, then it'll go on through anyway. And if we set it on ignore, then it'll completely just ignore redstone. Uh, but if we go ahead and switch this to blacklist, you'll notice this iron doesn't actually move now because it's blacklisted in the filter. But if we go ahead and switch it to whitelist, you'll notice that it will move all the iron through into that strong box. You can also use these on tanks so you don't actually have to output through the bottom. If I just turn that on, then it will go ahead and start moving the water. If I didn't actually have the servo though, nothing would happen because the actual input and output of this tank is actually on the bottom. Okay guys, so the next thing we have is the vacuum item duct, and this is made with an item duct and three silver nuggets, and this basically decreases the path length 
dramatically. And I will explain to you guys what that actually means in a second. But we also have the opaque version, which is just made with a regular item duct opaque and three silver nuggets. We also have the dense item duct, which increases the path length dramatically again. Uh, this is made with a regular item duct, and this is the regular version, and three lead nuggets. And you can also make the, den uh, the opaque version. So I'm going to show you how these guys work now. So I have a set of item ducts set up here. And we have everything on normal. We have the uh, redstone control off. So this thing is on. We have this on nearest first. So it's established it should go into this strong box. Yes, this stone should. And it does. What the vacuum and dense item ducts do is they change that. So if I place the vacuum item duct down here now and put the stone in here and threw it in here, we'd notice it would go down here. And that's because this thing is basically telling the servo this uh, item duct is a lot closer than this one. And we can do this vice versa as well. I actually just lost all my stone, so that's brill. Uh, but if we placed the dense item duct down here and changed this back to a regular one, it would also go down there because this uh, item duct is now telling this uh, servo here, this is a lot further away than this one, despite the fact that the pipes are actually closer. So that's kind of what these two do. Okay guys, the next thing we have is the impulse item duct. And these basically allow you to transfer items at a quicker rate through the pipe. So these are made in a fluid transposer with energized glowstone and it takes 200 millibuckets of energized glowstone and one glowstone dust will actually produce 250 millibuckets. So it's essentially one glowstone for 1.25 pipes. And these are made in by putting an item duct or an opaque item duct, depends if you want the opaque or regular version, in a um, fluid transposer with energized glowstone. So to demonstrate this, I have decreased the stack size of this down to one. I set this to high, so when I switch this on, these will turn on exactly the same time, and they each have a stack of granite to move. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this on, and you'll notice these items are kind of moving at a regular pace, and these ones are kind of shooting through the item duct. And as you can see, they are basically filling up this one a lot quicker than this one uh, because the items are traveling a lot quicker through the item duct. So as you can see, they both finished around the same time actually, which was a little surprising to me. I think it might be more to do with how fast the item duct actually moves it through the pipe. So I think it would make more of a difference over a greater difference, but it was about a second in it uh, at this length. But I think at a longer distance, it would actually make a more significant difference. But for right now, I think that was pretty conclusive, to be honest with you guys. I'm not sure if you agree. Yeah, these are a bit faster, uh, the impulse ones. But I think over a longer distance, it would make a greater difference. And then, obviously, we have the vacuum impulse item duct. Because it wasn't complicated enough already. Uh, yeah, they're going to start combining a lot of words together. And basically, what this thing does is it acts as a vacuum item duct and an impulse item duct and it's essentially made with a impulse item duct surrounded by three silver nuggets and this basically does the same thing as the vacuum one before but it's an impulse one as well so things just travel faster through it and again we have the opaque version and there's also the dense impulse item duct so this works the same as the dense item duct and the impulse put together again essentially so this is made with an impulse item duct and three lead nuggets and we have the opaque version as well and next we have the signalum plated item duct so basically these act like the um in uh, the fluid ducts the signalum plated fluid ducts they are tra able to transfer items and rf so redstone flux and 4000 rf per tick so this is made with one item duct and three signalum nuggets and three electrum nuggets and that'll give you three of the uh one of the signal and plated item duct and then we have the three recipe which is made with three item ducts an electrum inga and a signal inga and that'll give you three of them and again you can do this with the opaque version and these just transfer energy and uh items as i said at the beginning uh so the next thing we have is the vacuum signal and plated item duct you can see where this is going they kind of all just combined together to make an ultimate item duct uh so this is made with obviously a signal and plated item duct and three silver nuggets and there's the obviously the opaque version there's always the opaque version which is just made with the opaque version of the item duct that i have stated in the crafting recipe and then we have the dense one as well which is made with the signal and plated item duct and three lead nuggets and again opaque version and now we have the signal and plated impulse item duct and these basically are made with the impulse item duct and then three signalum nuggets and three electrum nuggets and that'll give you one 
and you can do the three recipe as well. So three impulse item ducks, three, uh, one signal ingot and one electrum ingot. You can tell I really wanted to say three then. Um, and again, obviously we have the opaque version and then we have the vacuum signal and plated item duct, impulse item duct. Yeah, I told you they were all going to be put together. So this is made with a signal and plated impulse item duct and three silver nuggets. And again, we have the opaque version and then we have the dense signal and plated impulse item duct. And this is basically made with a signal and plated impulse item duct and three lead nuggets. And again, we have the opaque version. The next thing we have is these structural ducts and these provide structure. Basically, they use as a crafting recipe for something else. And these are made with one lead ingot and two iron nuggets and that'll give you six. And what these are used for are actually to combine a uh, block with a structural duct to make a cover. And you do this by just combining a structural duct with any compatible block, so stone for this example. And you'll get six of that cover. And these basically act as covers for the item duct. So if I place this on here, you'll notice it's actually covering up the item duct like so and around it so it just doesn't look like it's there you can kind of have these things kind of flush with the wall uh or like anything like that really the only difference thing is you can't actually place them to hide them behind chests only next to them and if there's like a block here like this lever you can't actually place them on there but yeah that's basically what these covers do okay guys so the next thing we have or are, are going to be covering is these viaducts and the first you're going to need is these viaducts untreated and these basically transfer players that's pretty simple, isn't it? So these are made with four hardened glass and four bronze ingots, and that'll give you an untreated viaduct. The next thing you're gonna need is this blitz powder, and this is got by crafting either crafting or pulverizing a blitz rod. You get two for crafting and four for the pulverizing. And these are got from blitzes, the mob from the mod. And then you can make this erothium dust, and this is made with two blitz powder, one redstone, and one nitre, and that'll give you two erothium dust. And then in the magma crucible, we're gonna melt this down, this erothium dust down to zef. I can't even say that, and that'll give you 250 millibuckets of it. And then you can obviously bucket it up into the. I'm not even gonna try and say that bucket. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it. Or you can combine it with these viaducts untreated to actually make a viaduct. And this takes 100 millibuckets per viaduct, so this makes 2.5 per erothium dust. And yeah, in the fluid transposer, that basically is. And you get yourself a viaduct. And to set up these viaducts, simply just place them like so, and you can have them like anything. And you're going to need a crescent hammer once again. And these are to create access points. So if you right click with a crescent hammer, it will actually create an access point. And you can create an exit point again, or an another access point here. And you can create them along the uh, thing, which I didn't mean to do that for. But yeah, you can create them along the viaduct as well. So if I come in here and you'll see there are two different exits. So if I click on that one, it'll take me to here. It puts the closest one first. And if I click on that one, it'll take me through here. And that's essentially how you set these things up. They just act as kind of like a viaduct system. And you can actually name these things by clicking on them and then pressing config and then calling it like one and then doing that. So now this is actually named number one. So if I came in here, you'd see number one is right here and that would take me to number one. If I clicked on config here and put this to number two and then this one to number three, then we'd actually know where we were going as opposed to unnamed and unnamed. So if we wanted to go to number two, it would take us here. If we wanted to go back to number three and you can use these in your base uh, then and uh, you can just connect yourself up. Okay guys, the next thing we have is actually this long range viaduct and this basically transports the player faster so these are useful for over long range and these are made with four hardened glass and four lead ingots and uh yeah you can't actually connect these two together though and these can't actually be used as an access port they're only for transport to actually connect these two guys up you need a long range linking viaduct and this is made with 1000 millibuckets of resonant ender and a viaduct in a fluid transposer basically and you can get yourself a long range and essentially what you do is you place your regular viaduct, then you place your long range linking viaduct. This also can't be used as an exit. And then you place your long range viaducts. I meant to place long range, not linking ones. And you can place these as long as you like. And then on the end of where you want to go. So if you wanted an output here, uh, then you would place it right there. And you can't actually have more than one coming off the sides of these uh, long range ones, only off the 
regular ones they can split then you'd place your regular viaduct and obviously then you'd have to open up the ends like so and then they should connect uh, as long as you right click on them both like so to make sure they are actually connecting on both sides and then if I click on here I travel slightly faster through the center point here the long range one and than I would through the regular viaduct so that's why it's kind of advantageous to have the long range ones if you plan on traveling over long distances. Well okay then guys we have covered quite a few things today we've covered item ducts, servos, fluid ducts and viaducts all in this vi video plus covers so yeah I hope you guys did enjoy and if you did please be sure to leave a like subscribe and hit the notification bell and I hope you did find this useful and I'll see you guys next time bye bye.